All right, guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make objects follow another object. And by that, I mean point towards another object. So let me go ahead and show you what I mean. Let's add in a cube. I'm going to scale it by 0.1. Just make it a nice small cube here. Shift D to duplicate it on the Y axis. Shift D and then Y. And then I'm going to press Shift R, which is going to repeat that same action. Shift R a bunch of times. Highlight these. Shift D and then X, and then of course, shift R. So I have however many I want. That looks almost like a square. I'm fine with that. Now I'm gonna press shift D on this guy, bring it up and scale it. Now this is gonna be our leader of the pack here. So this guy is going to have everything else follow him. Now what we have to do first is we have to click on one of our smaller cubes, add a constraint, and the constraint we're looking for is track two. And then I select my eyedropper, I click on the thing that I want to track, and you can see now when I move my mouse that it is tracking, which is fantastic, but they all need to track. So first, click on the one that has the constraint, hold shift, highlight everything else, go to object, you're going to go to um, constraints, and then copy constraints to selected objects. And now you can see when we move our cube, everybody else wants to follow us. Whoa, look at me, follow me guys. Look at that, how cool is that? Now you guys have probably seen this before, but I wanted to show you how quick and easy this was because it's really easy. I don't know, it's easy to do, it's fun. And now what we can do is, one thing we can do is we can center this guy, well, as perfectly as we possibly can, okay? And we can just get a cool render. So I'll just show you how to make a cool render out of this. Let me give this a quick save. I'm gonna save it like, you gotta name it exactly like that or your render won't come out good. I'm gonna to go to my material, or sorry, uh, rendered view. I'm gonna add in HDRIs for some basic lighting. Let's go to our HDRIs. I am going to click on my cubes and I think I'm gonna make them just like a metallic shader for now. Now, a really cool trick I learned is how to copy the same shader over to everything else. Again, holding shift with the first one selected, control L and then you click on link materials and now they're all the same material and you can lower the roughness as much as you want. Now, I think I want these to have a bevel. So let's go ahead and add a bevel, generate bevel, and I think I'll give it a few segments there. Right click, shade auto smooth, shift, highlight everything else, control L, and then we're gonna do copy modifiers. And now, as you can see, they all have a bevel. Then, of course, I am going to add my own bevel to this guy up here, and I think I'll make him have a little bit of a stronger bevel, but still rounded corners. Shade Auto Smooth, New Material, and I think I'm going to make this guy kind of like a, a high roughness, low metallic kind of material like this, kind of like copper, and then the other guys are going to be like nickel plated, um, almost like, I don't know, what, they almost look like magnets, but this just looks really fun. Now let's go ahead and set up a cool render. Let's add in a plane. Let's scale it up. Let's go to our top down view and center it the best we can. Let's bring it below everything else. Let's go ahead and set up a camera. Now I love this HDRI because I feel like it offers a lot. Camera is going to sit over here. We're going to bring it this way. Now I'm just in my top down view so that I can quickly position my camera where I think I want it. Okay. Now I might go for an orthographic view here. Yeah, orthographic is going to do it. Now check this out. I'm going to go into my orthographic view, zoom way, way far in on my cube here. I'm going to enable depth of field and you already know I'm going to select my main cube. And already I have a really cool looking render. And then I'm just going to up this value in my viewport display so that I can't see the edges. And look at how cool our render is with just a few seconds. Now what would happen if we move this around? Everything else is going to get out of here notification. Everything else is going to move around with it. And our depth of field naturally is going to adjust as needed. So look how quickly we can create a really fun scene with pretty much zero effort. And what's really cool is if I want to, I can increase my bevel so much that my cube becomes a sphere, but I'm not gonna do that. This looks really good. I'm very happy with this. If I wanted to, I could render it. Let me turn off overlays to see what this looks like. And again, we can make this go any direction we want. If we move it along the X, you'll see that everything follows. And if we put it in the middle, well, it looks pretty good. So this could be a render right here. And this looks really awesome. Look how much fun this is. Um, here's what's really cool, and I'll show you guys this right now. If we take our bottom layer, this, and this is, I'm about to wrap this tutorial up. 
we take our bottom layer and just duplicate it just a little bit and scale it down and then duplicate it one more time oops hold on shift d sorry my keyboard's kind of covered by my webcam here and then we bring this up and adjust our camera view should have a more an even more intense version of what we had before but again totally up to you how you guys want to format your scene i just think this looks really cool and as you move everything else moves with it pretty darn fun um, i'm going to quickly format this during the tutorial so that i can actually have my youtube thumbnail let me go ahead and adjust this and whatever you see here is going to be what the youtube thumbnail ends up being See if we can create something cool here. I don't know if I love the, the, the first two layers. Here, let me delete this layer. See what this looks like. What do you guys think? How does that look for the YouTube thumbnail? Not terrible. I think I need to reposition my camera shot. Something like that, perhaps. And then maybe some, some font on the left. Now, I usually don't include this part in my tutorial, but a lot of you guys have asked me how I make my thumbnails. So I figure, why not show you? This is pretty fun right here. Look at that. That looks great. I mean, I think. And then I can just put my text off to the left. And I can put a little Blender logo. Boom. All right, let's render it out real quick. We have our render settings set up. 300 samples. Nah, we don't need that many. Let's do 50. We have our optics denoiser. Render, image, and wait for it, wait for it, boom. All right, it's a little fuzzy. I'll bump up the samples just a little bit. We'll do 150 samples. Render, image, and we're good to go. Wait for it, and it's going to take a little longer this time. I did put a lot of objects in there, so it's only fair. It's almost done and 12 seconds and that looks good to me and to be honest it doesn't have to be too crazy for youtube it just has to look semi-appealing now we go to image save as and of course i would save that to my downloads folder and i would just name it copper thumbnail and we're good to go all right guys well if you enjoyed this tutorial please consider subscribing to the channel leave a comment what you want me to cover next and i'll be more than happy to cover it have a great day guys